is a Happy Medium Podcast. I'm Jerry. That's Matt. Matt went to a couple concerts this weekend, and we're going to get together and do a little uh, review session on uh, how that went for Mr. Murtaugh. So the floor is yours. The, 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 the digital floor is yours. Wow. Well, first, uh, first one, first and foremost, was uh, Tool at the Enterprise Center, and uh, they played six new songs. Uh, their selection was not a greatest hit selection. They probably played two actual like singles, "The Pot" and o- "Opiate." Oh, op- apparently they were doing "Opiate" or "Sober," and I saw "Undertow" on some previous set list. Honestly, their new songs were like the highlight. Uh, it seems like they put more production into their new songs with the uh, visuals. I mean, when they did Hooker with a Penis, which was amazing, uh, that was at the end. It was kind of just like the lights going on and off. And, you know, Maynard doesn't have that range anymore. Um, you know how he kind of like talks during the song? Like, oh, I'm trying you know, to think which one that, I'm trying to think of which one that is. Is that, uh, uh, it's like, I met a boy where. Oh, yeah. That's a good He song. doesn't go like that. He does like the whole, and then he's like, all you know about me is what I sold you. Dumb fuck I, you know. Yeah. He does it in that, like, pace the whole time. Just that, da 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 because he can't go. Yeah. You know, he's 57. He even said, he goes, I'm 57, and I, I'm a, I'm 57 who thinks they're 47. He's pretending to be 27. No kidding. Yeah. He actually had, uh, addressed the crowd. He did at the end. He did. Yeah. He did it at the end. Where he goes, okay. You guys have been good. You can take out your phones, even though yeah. that wasn't being enforced at all. The last shows I've been to, I saw people getting roughed up and taken out for filming. Um, it seemed like they cared about that and only that. Um, I've been seeing a lot of videos on YouTube. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's being enforced anymore. But the last tour I saw them on, it was like they're like Nazi soldiers. The security. And I had my yeah. phone out. Like Pink Floyd, the wall. Remember Pink huh? Floyd, the wall. Remember Pink Floyd, right, the yeah. wall, the movie, where either doing the thing and they're like that one over there. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, up against the wall. Yeah. yeah up against the wall. <laughs> yeah. It was like that. They shot a light on you. You know. Yeah. Um, there was some lady. I mean, there was people who are like fucked up or just really into it. They get into the aisles and start like dancing all trippy like. At one point, I was on my phone. I don't know. I was just checking the time or something. And there was someone sitting on the step right next to me. And I just thought it was just some person fucked up sitting next to me, whatever. And then the person I was with, like, went to the bathroom. And then came back. And then the person had to move. They're like, what would you do? And it was security, like, sitting right next to me while I was on my phone. I don't know if they're, like, watching me. Like, just just, just do it. Just lift it up and take a picture. You're yeah. fucking, you know what I, <laughs> I, well, I had no clue. I, w- I was texting you uh in the middle of it i don't know if it was uh, if it was close to being over or not um and i and like as soon as i said i'm like oh yeah i forgot that it was phones out or uh, it's you know no phones but you texted me oh, right away so the person two rows in front of me i think pretty much filmed the entire concert really yeah uh, and that emboldened me to do it i was scared to do it based on past experiences but i you know i didn't give a fuck i really didn't and uh, honestly He's right, and the whole thing about phones is right because you're not capturing the true magic. It's, even if you have like a really nice phone, it's still not the same as like being there. But I say like, I don't know. I I, I want to have it to remember. But then when do I ever go back and look at this shit? Never. I mean, I don't. I don't ever go back and go. Let me watch this tool performance again. Yeah, I still feel if- like I can't enjoy it because I'm like, I gotta get this video. I gotta like- record this thing. It's like, dude, just fucking watch it, man. You know. But, but it's like. How I see it, like, I'm sure you're probably the same way. I just, I just want like a snapshot in time, and that's it. Yeah, like that's it. I don't want the whole song. I just maybe like a chorus of something, and then I'm done the whole night. I'll, it'll be the the beginning or the end. Upload it to a social media, and then done. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I'm, I but as opposed to filming the whole the whole song or a whole show, I mean, that's why you even there, you know. I've like made conscious decisions and statements to myself. Like you're not filming shit tonight. Like you're not filming shit. Like you're not going to do that. 
and then I'll go there and they'll play like that some song I'm in love with, and I'll just I can't control myself. Yeah. And I'm filming the song, and it's like, dude, you're not even enjoying this. this. Is your favorite fucking song, and you're worrying about capturing it. And then yeah, you'll put it on social media, and it'll be over with in like a day. No one will give a fuck. No, I mean, no. One, I mean, I don't. know. You know what I mean? Like, we'll 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 use the videos you captured and put on our social media so our ten followers can look at them. Yeah. We don't even have social media, do we? I mean, <laughs> we're left on, uh, I think, one of them, maybe two. Are we on Parlor? Uh, no, we're on uh, um, bigboytrump.com or app, whatever. I don't know. Are we really? No. Okay, I was just saying, I, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got just booted from Facebook. The rest of them are, are still going. I, I Twitter's the easiest, it's just post. We're on Instagram, but I don't know. My Facebook restrictions are listed tomorrow, so. Oh, boy. I'll be, I'll be back at starting shit, even though it seems like it's not restricted at all. Are you going to go but, crazy like when a dude gets out of jail, you're just going to go on Facebook and just, like, just engorge yourself now that you can? I've been on Facebook. I was restricted. Oh. Oh. It said, like, your post won't show up. But, I mean, the people have been uh, reacting to them, you know, positive or negatively or being assholes or trying to be funny along with me. So I don't know how restricted it is. Am I that much of a fucking badass when they restrict me and people have to seek out my content? <laughs> I'm being completely ridiculous. I just go uh, to the, I'm annoying to a lot of people. I just go to the, the, the China owned the China owned apps are where I'm at right now. The Russian one? No, the China. Oh. You'll you'll oh, I got you. You'll I got you. Talk of tick. We're on that too. TikTok. <laughs> I think we get the most traffic on that. All the uh, Chinese people love us. Yeah, Maynard. Okay, so Maynard made TikTok videos, and yeah, apparently the one he made in St. Louis, and someone said it wasn't St. Louis, it was Moline, but I don't know how you can prove they just posted it after St. Louis. Is this was it was a huge dildo or some sort of sex toy, and he he snuck it behind Danny the drummer, and when he was reaching for his stick, he grabbed the sex toy. Oh my god! And he was just like. Threw it out of anger, and then they just like laughing, like crawl. He's like crawling. <laughs> I saw, I saw. It was just a picture of him like eating dinner in the middle of the stage. Yeah, is that not? Really? It like it looked like he set up like a little table wow. in the middle of the stage. I'll I'll, have to, I'll have to find it and post it. I, I've seen it all over the place. I've seen him do Jenga, and I've seen him do Operation. That's awesome. Yeah, so he's with it. He's fifty-seven, and he gets it. Yeah, it's here somewhere. I feel like I said it's probably off my feed now because I've seen it like all all over the place. But I would say the set list was for true fans and people who liked the new album. You weren't going to hear your classic songs, and I respect them a lot for that. And I really enjoyed it, and it's probably one of my favorite times seeing them. When they opened up with Fear and Oculum, it was very intense. Like it was like it's like 3D and just like poof. It how, was like how was uh, how was the general response? It seemed overtly positive, but I think most people were far gone where anything they could do no wrong. Yeah. I think just visuals and music, it's just like, yeah, this is awesome. I mean, people seem pretty fucked up. Um, at some point, you know, I went to the bathroom and I was like, yikes. Uh, there's some people talking shit to each other. They're just people just far gone, just far gone, it's darkness. I mean, I was having a good time too, but like, I don't want to like black out at the Enterprise Center. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm fucking fall down a bunch of stairs. I, they played, oh, I, I calculated they played over two hours. No, no kidding. Yeah. Well, they do the day cheat though, because they do a 10 minute intermission. Right. And they do a clock. Yeah. That's the same clock that was there. Yeah. The they do it every time. I think they do it to cheat to get two hours. Oh, okay. But uh, a set list off the top of my head, Fear Inoculum, Opiate, uh, Push It. It's a lot of Anima. A lot of Anima deep cuts. Just two, yeah. Hooker with uh, and Push It and... Push It and then Numa. Um, then it was, I think, right in two. That's a good one. Slow, but it's a good one. Uh, 
Oh, no, oh, wait, 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 wait. They did the pot after opiate. So they went pure inoculum, opiate, the pot, push it, then Numa. And Numa was crazy, too. And then they, they the last new song they did was Descending Before the Encore. And that was crazy as well. And then they came out after the encore. They played Hooker with a Penis off Anima. Then boom, like off the stage, clock goes up. Come back, play Calling Voices and Invincible. So that's another like 20 minutes. <laughs> Yeah. Did they then they do the grudge? Yes, they did the grudge. Yeah, that was the one that was the song they did off Lavin Rollins, which was the best song I think they could pick. So yeah. that was towards the end too. That was intense as well. I would love to see that. I wish they would have played sober instead of opiate. I've heard opiate before. Opiate doesn't hit me the way sober does. Or the prison prison sex or something like that, but whatever. Um it is what it is. Yeah, I'm satisfied. I'm not gonna be like hey, that was terrible. I mean, they put a lot of effort into it. Like they did. Like you want to say, okay, bands have been around for 20 plus years. They don't give a shit anymore. We all know the bands. We're not gonna sit there and name them. We know who plays off their first two albums in like one new song, and then they go on tour every year. This was expensive. This was a lot of fucking effort. Like this was, boom, man. And someone was telling me that the sales were down. Uh, probably shouldn't bring up COVID, but the sales were down. Uh, until they lifted the restrictions, then it just like floored, which is good or bad depending how you feel about COVID. They were still promoting it on the radio the day of, like get your tickets. It, it, was, it had to be sold out, like you couldn't move, like even like walking through like the hallways, you couldn't move, like and it's just fucked up people everywhere. Some people smoking cigarettes, like that's not like fucked up people not. inside. Yeah. Damn. I mean, there's weed, and I expect weed at a tool show. Like that's the least, but like cigarettes. I remember seeing him talk at Bush Stadium thinking it was very trashy for people smoking cigarettes there. Yeah. But like so many people do it, you can't stop them. I mean. Yeah. So it sounds you like. at a Cardinal game? I think you have designated areas. Yeah. This That's is outside. This, this is just a common crowd it is. <laughs> so it sounds like the combination of the last time they came and this time was like the perfect sell list. Last time they came, it was more of a greatest hits, right? Well, they didn't they have a new album out yet. It was right before the new album, so they had two new songs. They played Invincible and Descending. Yeah, but they played like they played uh, Parabola and The Pot. But yeah, it was all I can't remember. I think they they closed with they closed with Stink Fist. That was when he's like, yeah. Out your I, was, I think they, I'm sure they played Adam on too. Did they do Lateralis? I can't remember. Maybe Schism. Let's let's look it up real quick. But you can keep talking. What's that? Setlist.fm? So let's, yeah. I looked at the last time they were here. Uh, not the last time, but the 10,000 Days Tour. And it was like, it was like eight songs. Like, it was Rosetta Stone, Jambi, The Posh. Uh, Vicarious and then 46 and 2 out of us, Stink Fist and Schism, I think, or Lateralis. So, this, this, according to setlist.fm, setlist is Fear Inoculum's second leg. This whole tour, so okay. I guess the first leg would have been. Three. I saw the first leg, they only, I mean, I saw the setlist, they play Fear Inoculum, Numa, and then. Tempest or whatever at the end. That's all they did. And it was the greatest hit set list. Yeah. Let's see. Tool. Yeah. The only problem with this website is it's hard to navigate. Oh, you can do by year. Cool. Because that was 2019, wasn't it? When we saw it. The last time. The last time they yeah. came before this. Yeah, the first year. Or was it 2018? Shit. Because they did all, oh, there we go. This one was called the 2019 tour. So, third eye intro Anima, The Pot, Parabola, Descending, Schism, Invincible, Jombie, Intolerance, 46 and 2, Chocolate Chip Trip, Vicarious Stink Fist. That was their 2019 tour? Yes. Oh, that's not what I saw. Yeah, well, I saw. We were there. 
and then in the middle, Numa, and then last song was Tempest. In 2019? That's when the album came out. The last time they came? Oh, last time they came. My yeah. Dude. I, okay. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah, I remember they ended with Stink Fist. I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about their tour. No, that's first. okay. Yeah, that that's a good that's a good set list. That's that's the problem with Tool. Every time I see him, it's like, yeah, that's a good set list, but I still want like five to ten more songs. <laughs> For a band who doesn't have that many albums, considering how long they've been around, they have quite a catalog of what you'd want to hear. Yeah, because I can think of songs that are not like random songs, but that'd be great to hear, like uh, Rosetta Stone. That'd be awesome. I think that's just a problem that we have at our age with bands that have been around forever. It's like, you know, you never know when they're going to come around, even though Tool comes around pretty often. But Lately, it's, like, no, no. it's almost not like, anymore. right. It's almost like anytime they come to town, it's like, I want to see every single song that I like from you. And that could be all night long, depending how how good they are. You can laugh at me if you want. I'll talk about my next show, but I got tickets. Uh, to my one we were young festival, my personal one. You did to the, the Hollywood Casino, Rob Zombie, Love oh. Zane, Static X, Power Man Five Thousand. I didn't even know that was a tour. Yeah, I just got announced, and I did like a pre-sale. You talk about a shit show of an audience. Yeah, yeah. that's why I like. I'm gonna do lawn. I'm going solo as far as this far so. If I go solo, I don't like to be in a seat. I like to be able to like move around and like get away if I want to. But that's where the shit show is, is in the lawn. Depends. That yeah, audience yeah, is yeah. getting older though. Remember when we went to Ostrich turn Slipknot and like oh, everyone was yeah. killing each other? They're just killing each other in the fucking lawn. Last time I saw Slipknot back in 2019, I was on the lawn. It was so fucking peaceful. Like huh. I don't know. Your knees hurt after a while. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna dust out the old uh baggy Jinko jeans and the and the uh the chains and the i guess that was it the black t-shirts yeah i mean you know it wasn't a bad time to be alive it wasn't a bad time to be like young i mean i i don't i don't envy the youth now yeah. i mean i think there's a gonna be a detachment from like the youth and like older generations as they keep going but that's just how it is yeah and, and then you see the lala lineup <sighs> Is that Metallica? Green Day. Metallica, Green Day, Dua Lipa, Machine Gun Kelly. That's like the big ones. So I'm not going to that this year. Yeah. No, I thought you said you were going to the actual When We Were Young Festival. No, that's my When We Were Young Festival. Okay, gotcha. When I was young, those were the bands that were like really big. No, what was that one I sent you? The, uh, the one that in Knoxville, or not Knoxville. Louisville. Louisville. Oh, Louder Than Life? Yeah. I've been to that one before. I feel I like I backstage at that one. I'm not trying to brag, but it was just like on accident. I was with a friend who just bullshitted his way backstage. Like, just bullshitted his way. We did not deserve to be back there. And we were like back there when Corn was playing. And I could have like grabbed him if I wanted to. I feel like. But yeah, I'm... those are the bands that are there. Hey, listen, though, you know, you, okay. So when we were young, that's what's current, Jerry, in that genre. Like those bands are on par to what's current in that genre. Like you know, when we were young, it's like the, the no one's ever like the, the torch has never been passed. Right. I mean, those headliners have been the headliners for twenty years. Right. And then you have some baby bands during the day that you may never ever fucking see again. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm still here sitting waiting for Rage. Are you still going? I guess I don't know. Yeah. Okay, comrade. What am I supposed to do? Did I tell you about the dude trolling me on the Rage page? Because I made some Apple yeah, comment. You said that last podcast. Well, we can do a reboot of it, of, the, of this discussion. <laughs> yeah, I want to go, but uh, I want to get better seats, so I might sell mine. But, dude, you talk about you talk about fucking expensive. My tool ticket, granted, I don't know where it was at. But my tool ticket costs more than my Rage ticket. Really? I didn't think my tool tickets were that expensive. But I, I, I didn't have it for $145. Did you have like front row seats? 
I don't know where we were at. We were probably probably really good team. I was up top, but like I don't give a fuck. Tool, you don't need to be like up close for Tool. Right. That's like the one band you can be like really far away and still like have a good time. Right. But Rage um, is the opposite. They have no stage show. No, they don't need one though. Right, but if you're way far back, like you can't see any, like there's no visuals to look at. It's basically just you see see them as ants. Yeah. At least Tool, they have that ginormous. Yeah. Visual. When I saw Rage, they just had a big star behind them. Yeah, they always. I don't think they ever had a stage show or yeah, any type of anything. Yeah. It was good though, but like he 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 made some comments that were like pretty weird. I mean. I mean, at the time, uh, Barack Obama was being elected as president, and he said some kind of threatening thing that if he doesn't pull us out of Afghanistan or Iraq, very powerful people are going to be mad at him. And then he said, like, there's no threat to America. There's no threat at all. It's all a fucking lie. Yeah, he. I was, like, talking shit to the people with me, and they're like, well, at least he's got the guts to say it. I'm like, oh, the guts to say it as he's making a million dollars to people yes. eating out of his hand? What balls? No, what, should be really like a privileged white rich Chicago kids who like don't give a fuck about anything he stands for. Just want to. Yeah. Should be really interesting next year. God knows how much shit's gonna go down within a whole year from now. I just don't know how they can act like they're socialist, communist, anti-establishment, and be millionaires and ask for fucking money. Right. And charge those prices. I mean, honestly, if they truly believed in like that idealism. They would like have their conscience free, which is ridiculous. I understand that's not a, that's not possible, but it would be some sort of way where they didn't make thirty million dollars. Yeah, but man, they're going through Live Nation, so I mean that's you're dealing with. I mean, profits of rage. Remember that joke? I mean, yeah. he's just a whore. He's a that was that was so fucking stupid. What was it? Him and uh, some guy from Public Enemy. Yeah, and those tickets were like forty five bucks. Those from Cypress Hill, too? Those tickets, from cheap as, those tickets are cheap as hell. And they just did, like, covers, right? Uh, Yeah. But they played at, like, all these places that were, like, owned by banks, though. That was ironic. Yeah, I mean, they played at Hollywood Amphitheater. I almost went. And they put, this was, it was, like, it was during the Trump era. Either Trump was getting elected or he was already yeah. elected. So 2016, maybe? I remember seeing a video of Tom Morello and he just played the Democratic National uh, Convention, Province of Rage. And he was saying that everyone wants to rage against the machine. We know how to rage against the machine. It's like, dude, you play the Democratic National Convention, okay? Like, that's kind of the machine, bro. Like, <laughs> I mean, well, they, were pro- they were protesting it. No, they this was like, yeah, that, years that, ago. Was, that, was, well, that was back in the day. Yeah. That was Rage Against the Machine. This yeah. is Province of Rage. Oh, absolutely. Like in the nineties, they they did some sort of stunt and caused a stir where they did like fuck it. They did something. They also did something on SNL where they like trashed presidential candidate was hosting and they trashed his dressing room and then I think they came out naked or something. The only one who's real out of all those four, I mean Zach's pretty real too, is the bass player. He's the one who's the dude who climbed up uh yeah, that's climbed the bass player. For, for he's, with Fred Durst, he's hard to work get off of. He 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 had his own band and he did some music video where, God, what was I forgot what the cause was, but he got basically arrested in the music video. Wow. So until Rage saying, comes out with another music video where they get arrested, like they go back on Wall Street again, like they did in the Testify video. That was badass. Like that was awesome. Was, it comes to a point though where it's like you got to give it up. Right. Like they don't even have a new album out. It's like their tour, greatest hits tour, basically. They have, like, what, two or three albums? Yeah. So that set list isn't going to be that great. I mean, it's going to be great, but it's like, how many times are you going to see that shit? And do they play off? Do they going to play Running Games of Fuck? Because yeah, I saw them, they ignored that they album. They did not play anything cover. Like that album. But I've never seen them before, so. I'll... They, they opened with they opened with Testify, which is cool. And then I think they closed with Killing of the Name. And that's all I really remember. And I remember being problematic with people in the crowd and them having to stop it and be like, stop. Yeah. He's like, save that shit for the streets. Save that shit for out there. Don't do that shit here, man. Don't do that shit here. And I, I told us to rage against the machine. It was probably like some kid who lives in like some mansion, like in Northside Chicago, whose parents like paid for everything. He's like, I'm going to be a badass. 
it worked it worked in those times and in that era without the technology but now like it's almost like end of the age too now you are the machine basically it doesn't work anymore the gimmick is over and i don't know if it ever was a gimmick but now at this point it is a gimmick they might have been genuine at first or it was but with all the shit we've been through the last two years like so back then it was like you know rebellious and what's the word counterculture but now like basically counterculture is or right now basically culture is that you know what i'm saying yeah. everybody's ready to just fucking rate like it's not just like for the for the the few who are angry now everybody's right. fucking angry like shit like it raised raised against the machine in their in their heyday from all their albums was all pre-9-11 all of it that's when the shit really hit the fans there and then afterwards from from then to now and they, they wouldn't have gotten away the 9-11 era they no way gotten away with it. It would have it would have ended them anyway. I think they broke up before that, but that would they have did. They, they, we had tickets to see them and the Beastie Boys, and one of the Beastie Boys guys broke his arm. Remember? And they canceled the tour instead of just fucking. We were like, "Come on, just do Rage." I mean, come on. Right. Remember that? Did I have tickets to that? We both did. It was like when we were in high school. We I, don't, going to I never had tickets to see Rage. Yeah, we did. It was, it was we. It was like over with really quickly though. Like we got the tickets. I remember Saturday morning. Old days, you get on your computer and you know you didn't have apps and shit. Or you'd call. You like call the box office or you'd go down there. But yeah. I would always do it online. And I got two tickets. I think it was for me and you. My brother was probably too young to go, so it couldn't have been my maybe, brother. Maybe that's why I don't remember, because you got the tickets and then the show didn't happen. Yeah, like like a couple weeks later they they just canceled it because uh one of the Beastie Boys guys got hurt. I mean, I like the Beastie Boys, but you broke your arm, like you can't just sit there and like rap. I they don't even play it's yeah they don't play instruments yeah they do for sabotage but well, like, that, get that was like i think that was more of a stunt like they say when zach broke his arm it's like all right well i mean you have like axel rose and dave Grohl like sitting in chairs performing yeah because they or, broke their foot. Or freaking travis barker broke his foot and still played that sucks because i would have that was like the best tour beastie boys rage against yeah. the machine at that time that I mean, that was like when Intergalactic was out. That yeah. was uh, Battle of Los Angeles. That would have been insane. Yeah. Oh well, it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> I don't think it was. I don't think it was meant to be for us. For me, you've seen them. For me to see Rage, I got tickets right before COVID happened. COVID happened, and shit. I got tickets now, and probably you know World War World War Three will happen, or a nuke will drop, or something. I'm just not meant to see them. Yeah. So then the second concert I went to that was last night. It was the Glass Animals at a venue I've never been to before, a new venue that seems to be getting all the shows, uh, the factory. And I love the place. Like, it is cool. Yeah. Like, I would rather play there than some of the other places that, I mean, as a band, I can see why. It's slightly bigger, but not too bigger. 3,000 capacity. I think the pageant's 1,800, maybe 2,000. But, like, you had bands like Green Day would play the pageant or Marilyn Manson or Alice Cooper. Like, they're going to go to the factory now, okay? They're not going to go to the pageant. They're but, not They're not going to get the uh, the taste of St. Louis playing all the way on suburbia Chesterfield. We get a taste of the cha-ching, though. Yeah, it's like, where do you want to go? It's like, well, you can go to the yeah. valley. I used to, work, I used to work over there. Really? Yeah. Do you get a taste of St. Louis when you play the Hollywood Casino? Uh, good point. You play, you get a taste of pretty much Maryland Heights and St. Charles. Good point. You're in kind of the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Good, good point. But, all but, right, the show was good? The show was good, okay. The problem was is I was waiting outside in the rain for like an hour, okay? Over an hour. And the show was supposed to start at 9, and it was 8.30. And I didn't get there that late. I'm still waiting out there. And it's raining. And it's taking forever to get in there. And why? It's because they're checking for vaccinations. Okay? Whatever. No comment. Still? I, I have mine. I don't care. I mean. Ban I mean, request. Ban request. Mean, that, that's good they do that. It's a good thing they do that still. It's fine. I mean, I don't give a shit because it doesn't affect me. But it affected me because I'm waiting forever. 
So you're preventing me from catching fucking COVID. That's great. But I'm going to get fucking pneumonia out here. And this asshole guy kept walking by going, make sure you have your stuff out so it goes by a lot quicker. You know? And I'm like, I'm like a half hour away from the entrance. So I'm not going to be holding my license and COVID papers in my fucking hand for a half an hour. But he was right. Because when I got up there, the person in front of me was not prepared. I had to like basically just push them out of the way because I'm like, I'm fucking cold. Dumbass. Like you had like an hour to get your fucking COVID thing out of your phone. And you're just like, Ugh. <laughs> what's wrong with you? What I didn't like about the venue is they were offering $10. For $10, you could skip the line. And they didn't do that until I was like already up close. They're giving you the Disney Fast Pass for get, for concerts now. Uh, they are. I've never seen that done before, and it's like, wow! I've been waiting for like ever, and now potentially all these fucking people are going to go in front of me. Fuck you! And like some people were like flipping out. Some people like ran to their car and got money. Um, it would be like I probably still would have paid for it, but it's like it would have been nice if you were here an hour ago. That's what people say. Like, where the fuck have you been? And it was just someone trying to do their job, like, oh, you know, trying to be friendly and upbeat and like customer service like. And uh, I just thought that was shitty, though. Like, you, you know, and she's like, I got enough passes for everyone to cut. Everyone. Okay, well, if everyone cuts, then what happens? The fucking line still exists. Right. Are you going to let us just bum rush the place? <laughs> Whatever. Once I got inside, though, top notch facility top-notch uh service uh amazing show i've seen the glass animals before at the pageant uh, it was good but they play like nine new songs this time and I, I heavily listened to the new album probably more than their other albums so i was really happy about that uh, amazing stage show uh, amazing visuals uh not as heavy as tool but almost as similar in that sort of nature the psychedelics and just trippy stuff uh, really receptive crowd not a trashy crowd uh, Seven Dust is going to be there this weekend at the factory, so I know probably a difference in behavior and people conducting themselves. I did see some cops throw some people out for underage drinking. It happens. Um, unfortunately, you can't play with that, though, because the venue can get like lose their liquor license. So oh, yeah. you can't tolerate that at all. Um, they, played, they played about an hour and a half. And uh, you know, a solid review. And I, I, I mean, outside of like having to wait in line, I think what took so long, the guy was probably right. People were like walking up to the fucking thing and like not prepared to have their stuff, like digging through their stuff. And that's probably what took so long. It's but a, it wasn't helpful yeah. to have a derogatory, demeaning kind of statement like that. Like, it's your fault. You know, you guys like waiting in the rain? Huh? You like this? Get your shit together. Like talking to a bunch of kids in, like, in, a, in a class. It's Can't just like, unless you're all room. quiet. But he, but he wasn't wrong though. Once I got up there, I was like, okay, no one, you guys, we've been waiting in the rain for like ever, and no one's prepared. Like you're acting like you're shocked. But it was a little like stressful because it's like, what if the people even in the crowd are like, what if we're not in there in time? Like, what if they start the concert? Yeah. And then like as cool. I'm getting up, I, I look back and there's like a huge fucking line still. Like I'll be fucking losing it. Like let's uh. Not going to a lot of detail. Well, whatever. So how, like, do you have to show an actual card? Yeah, or an ID. An ID. No, 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 for your vaccination. I have a little printed out thing I keep in my wallet for this kind of scenarios because they do come up from time to time. I just pull it out, I hand it to them, and uh, I give them uh, my ID. Where else do you have to go there for vaccinations? Um, I went to uh, the steeple to see my morning jacket and I wasn't prepared for it. And they got the security got kind of aggressive with me. I was just walking in like absentmindedly. They're like, stop, stop, show us your vaccination. And they're like, put a mask on. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know this was a thing still. Like, I mean, it was right before Omicron spiked up again. So, and like, so like I, go, I don't have a mask. And they gave me one. And I'm like, here's my, here's my, here's my like documentation. And it's just like I don't know, man. It, it, it like pissed me off. You know I me. Mean? I can't. I can't take shit very well. I was like, "What the fuck?" Like, that is so. Uh, I don't want to get on a fucking Joe Rogan rant or whatever, but it was like, "Hey, like I'm a customer here." Like, well, the good the good part is that's done. It's done now. For like for real, like Enterprise is done. It was like starting March fourth. They're not even doing. It's up it. to the band though. It's up to the band. I thought it was up to the venue. 
No, because I've been reading in the comments the, the factory, unless those people are wrong, but like for seven dust, I don't think they're gonna oh, have to Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I just Last think, animal specifically requested that. Well, it's for as for insurance purposes. Just make sure the tour does tours don't get canceled again. Or live right. nation or whoever they go through. Tool doesn't give a fuck apparently. You know Maynard's caught it like multiple times. Oh yeah, you were at Enterprise Center. Yeah. So before that, if it was before March 4th, it doesn't matter to the band. You would have had to show your status. But now, like Tool, for example, could have been like, we still want vaccination cards, and they would have been forced to. That's okay. That's a good thing. <laughs> Let's see if the bots can, can detect sarcasm. <sighs> <laughs> moving on i'll tell you this you know what if, if they suspend us or block us or whatever um i don't give a fuck anymore like my, my give a fucks are starting to go i don't care if i'm making people happy anymore or like i'm really like oh i don't want to i don't want to upset people or, you know because i was a prick when i was a kid you're you know you were with me i was a fucking prick and like i'm trying to like reinvent myself and be like nice but the problem is is I'm being too nice to where I'm letting people like fucking take advantage of me right. when I should be like, you're a fucking dumbass, fuck you. I'm cussing a lot. I apologize. I know you, don't the like old, that. you need to bring the old man out a little bit. Well, he was a little too far though. I need to have a happy medium. Right. He said it. The old man was too far. It was a Jekyll and Hyde thing. I, right now, like, you know, we've talked about stuff and I'm like, I'm really concerned about this. And you're like, dude, what's wrong with you? Like, you never would think twice about something like this. You'd be like, F them and it'd be over with. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't think I handled that right. We've had those kind of discussions. I don't want to bring up specifically, but um, yeah. I, I think I told you a story one time, and I was like really upset by it. And you're like, why? <laughs> like, that's funny. Like this. <laughs> yeah. But well, fuck. What was I gonna say? Oh, um, so I'm listening uh, to NPR. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, it's on. Uh, it's on the Alexa thing, like uh, like programmed in it on its own. Uh, be, have no choice. Uh, but I just go, let me hear the news headlines, like boom, boom, boom. So uh, first story. Uh, well, not the first story. First story is the Supreme Court justice, but then we can add it after this because I know this is just a sweet, short one. First story is the White House uh, has cut all funding uh, for COVID relief, and uh, they just passed the budget, and COVID's not in it at all. Okay. Next story. There's a new variant now in Missouri. That's even more contagious than Omicron. <laughs> well, yeah. That's great reporting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this, okay, this is not negative. This is like everything that's happened is a, it's good. Seriously, I'm not being sarcastic. It's good. Okay, like, yeah. No, where, no. where we're at is where we wanted it to be. We want it to be completely widespread and mild. So it turns into a cold every year or flu or a minor flu this is exactly yeah. what we wanted it's exactly like i remember when the uh megatron variant came out last year and a lot of a lot of smart people said this is what we want if it stays mild yeah this is exactly what we wanted and that's proven to be the case and i guess it could get worse i'm not an expert but i feel like the longer it goes on, the more it mutates to be more contagious, it's less deadly. And that's hopefully what we wanted. Do your own research, as they say. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we both could have it right now. We both, I've had. Yeah, I don't know. Stopped up nose for a couple of days and, and, uh, but just like always. I think, just, I think it's time to see. I mean, I hope I don't have to go. We're not scary, man. Like, I used to, even though after all this shit, it's still like I don't want it. Like, yeah, but once you have it, it's I don't. Know, once you've had it and been through it, it's like all right. Once you've had it, your life will never be the same. It's I mean, not, I mean, people, actually yeah. it's great. It's honestly, it's great getting it. And I mean, as long as it's mild, of course. I, don't know I mean, yeah, but that's the thing is, I know some people who like yeah. have breathing problems still. They have heart problems. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I just meant once you get it and get through it. Yeah, and you don't have anything long term. It's uh, it's good. It's a good. I'm just like, glad like mentally. Mentally, it's good. Yeah, I'm just glad uh, live shows are back at least for now. 
yeah. I'm glad that uh, there's like I can do like I go to all kinds of these stand up shows are back. I mean, it, but they never really. Uh, I mean, it's just good. It feels normal for now. And when I heard that, it was like, fuck, man. So they're cutting the funding, and then like, what's going to happen? I mean, like maybe nothing. I guess I don't know. It just didn't sound good going back to back like that story. But yeah, I mean, they've been talking about this for a while. So hopefully, it's just like you know there's a new variant but and that's the thing like with the colds and the flus there's always a new variant every year there has been for years so i don't think most people know that what we know of the common cold has been around since i think that was like the the pandemic of the 1880s 90s and and the flu of what we go through was from 1920 the spanish or flight first what whatever one was in 1890 one was in 1920 and we still have that today. So, you know, there's always a new variant every year of the same thing. So as long as it just stays, you know, more of this, just, you know, more nasally and not here. Like everything I'm reading about the new stuff, it's all just here. Yeah, it's annoying. It's, you know, it's still, you know, but the, the, the harsher side effects for the most part, not side effects, the hard, harshest, uh, um, symptoms are are really light like they're it's out of your chest basically for the most part so well that that sounds promising but there's also the flu it's also the cold that has been around that you know it hasn't been anywhere that's still around too and i remember last year i got sick at this time i'm not sick but like this like this you know nose stuff whenever starts things start blooming and i think that's the news it's like you're you think you have seasonal allergies but it could be covid all right so what? Uh, the news is a fear monger. I, yeah, don't get me started. I watched some news programs late last night and I got yeah. real upset. There was I, I follow an, uh, a guy who used to he was pretty he was pretty well known a news reporter on a local channel who now let's see I don't want to give it away or not give it away but he works for another completely different industry selling alcoholic beverages. Uh, but he tweeted he goes. I'll tell you one thing from experience, news companies love diseases and weather. Yep. So, and he's like, don't get me wrong. Vaccinations, it's all good. I'm not saying, not saying I'm anti this. Those are good, but just be aware. Don't be, don't be afraid. I forgot how you word it. Like, don't be afraid of what, of what the news says about, you know, the news. Well, Anyway. You can't waste a good crisis. I mean, they're excited. The news as a as a whole, like concept, is excited about the pandemic. It was ex- they they wanted to come back. They're excited about World War Three. Um, they're excited when like celebrities like melt down and like have breakdowns, and it's like you know, it's just uh, the, the news business. is a scummy, scummy thing. It like when our parents' day when our parents were kids. You'd have some guy reading from the like he would read like this happened here, this happened there, not like, you know, here's my show, and I'm gonna throw this like bullshit out at you that uh is not corroborated, but it's just a question. And then I'm gonna have someone on camera and we're gonna yell at each other. Like that's not news. Like it's gross. It's gross. I hate it. It makes me sick. John I almost went into news, man. John Stewart, uh, you know what? You brought this up a while ago. You should get Apple TV. I feel like Apple TV has a lot of good programming. Okay. I was going to say that because John Stewart's new show is, I feel, I feel like is really good. I like John Stewart. I do too. And so he, he, he did one on the media last, last episode. And like, so it's really good. Cause like, he'll do like a little monologue, like he always, like he used to, then he has like a panel and then he goes and talks to somebody who works for the industry that they're talking. So every episode is like the problem with. Okay. It's like it was like the like the one I watched was a problem with media, and the one before it was like the problem with Wall Street. It's like it, it, that's the theme. So that's they have okay. one theme the whole show, and so, and then by the end of it, they'll interview somebody who works in that said industry, like a higher up, like that, like the media one. He interviewed uh, Bob Iger from Disney. He used to work for Disney. He worked for like media organizations. So it's a pretty good show. But anyway, like the more more and more shows I watch uh, on Apple, like this is a pretty good, pretty good uh, streaming service. All right, I'll check it out. 
Uh, he was legendary uh, Daily Show host. I think the, I don't watch Daily Show anymore. So well, he, he also has a podcast. So like, uh, it's like, he, yeah, he has a podcast, like a YouTube video podcast. Right. That, that's kind of like your introduction into the. I think they do clips from the show on YouTube. Would you say the Daily Show is pretty relevant at this point? The Daily Show. No. With, with what's his name? With Trevor Noah. Is it relevant? Yeah. I don't see any, I've never seen any clips from it. Like, what has he ever quoted? I mean, I have seen him in the news at times, but like, I don't know, John Stewart was always like, John Stewart did this, John Stewart did that, John Stewart had this person on, John Stewart had this person yeah. on. And then this guy's kind of, I'm not trying to attack him. It seems like he's like dumbed it down. Like, it's, I don't know. I Maybe mean, that's just for the generation. My feed is, my algorithm is pretty much like John Stewart, Howard Stern, and, uh, who else? I'm trying to think of any no any big names, but it's never been Daily Show. Yeah. I don't maybe, know who. Maybe that's lovely. I, mean, I, I, I never. Right. I never get the others. I never get the Colbert's, the Jimmy Fallon. I never get that because I guess I'm on the other side. I'm on the counter. I don't think those shows are really relevant anymore, though, because I think their audiences are like two to three million, which sounds like a lot, but that's now where TV, which used to be 10 to 20 million. I mean, and that was the old days when all you had was network TV. I think people aren't watching that shit at like 11 o'clock at night anymore. They no, may just, be doing it. I just mean like the, the YouTube clips. Oh, I got you. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't like Colbert's show. I don't think he's funny. I think he goes low, low hanging fruit. I loved him on Strangers with Candy. I loved him on The Daily Show. I've loved everything he's done, but it just seems like he's he sold out, taken the viewer and made it like Middle America stupid kind of. Yeah, and just jumped on that that bandwagon to like whatever. They all do. It's 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 a late night. God, I I can't even say words without like sounding like an old person. Like liberal media. You know, whatever the, the that uh, one side is talking about, it's like they jump on it tenfold. Like they'll make like, yeah, I can't even say anything without getting like. Remember when they had like the songs about getting getting poked? Like you better get this or the. You know, it's just like it was like just like the propaganda machine. Well, they they're they're part of it. They're puppets. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and I think like. To keep their shows to have any kind of audience, they have to pander to people who need self affirmation or not self their affirmation to be like, hey, this is stupid. I think hey, so do I. I mean, there's people out there who like, like need that. That's why that was the return of John Stewart when John yeah. Stewart went on Colbert and he started talking about that. Oh, it's such a coincidence that uh, the the virus came from the same place where there is a lab there. Who you think that's a coincidence? <laughs> And Colbert's like, I know it had to have been all staged. He had to have known about that ahead of time. But Colbert's like, well, I don't know, John. You're, you're obviously, have you ever seen that? <laughs> have you seen that clip? No, that sounds funny though. It's a, it's good. It's, and he's trying, and you know, the other side made a big deal about it. Like, look at Colbert. He doesn't know what to say. I'm like, it was. It's not like Col It's not like John Stewart went in like <laughs> Colbert. Like they're buds. Yeah. But either way, it's it a good segment. Colbert is like, he's not like Andy Kaufman, but like, I read a quote where he's like, you gotta love bombing. You gotta have fun bombing. Yeah. Like, he did the White House Correspondents Dinner with George Bush, and he was like a prick to George Bush. And he like, normally you get someone with the same kind of views, like, you know, like Kid Rock or like somebody. And right. like, he like roasted everybody. And it was like dead silence. He didn't give a fuck. And I respect that. Like, well, because that, but that's, that's why I feel like he, his 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 fan his old fans don't like him because that was a character. The Stephen Colbert of the Colbert Report was a character. Yeah. And then I feel like once you move to late night, that's like the real Stephen Colbert. It's not like the 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 the. I mean, he wasn't a right wing guy, but he was a pretty like. He was a parody of Fox News. A parody, right? He was a parody of that. It side. was funny. It was great, but was of course funny. that didn't translate well to late night network yeah yeah because it's basically he went from doing like an snl skit pretty much yeah. and now he's like hosting a show and i don't know whatever i wish him luck i i thank him for all the years of laughter he gave me 
Uh, he the, one of the best things he did was one of the voices of the ambiguously gay duo on SNL. Yeah. I think that was it, him and Steve Carell. <laughs> it just sucks because like he, like he could have gone the route of, you know, doing his own show on a streaming service and doing like a podcast. But I still I feel I I love I know like Conan. I think Conan's the funniest guy ever. I just I love his humor. I don't care what he does. And I listen to his podcast every once in a while. It's just, it's funny. It's hilarious. I never watched a show on late night, you know, once he moved to uh, uh, TBS. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. But yeah, I feel like all, everybody else in that, in that range, like John Stewart now and John Oliver, and like they all did their, you know, the streaming service, same concept show. Yeah. And then Colbert took the money and ran to network. Yeah, I think Colbert would probably be a lot more entertaining if he was on a streaming service and producing his own show. For sure. Working for the working for CBS, Spyacom, the mothership. Yep. What are you gonna do? I don't know. There's enough rage. content out there. You're gonna rage. Yeah, rage. Rage against the Colbert. Rage against the Colbert. All right, man. You got anything else for tonight? And this was supposed to be like a really quick, like half an hour full episode, which is nice. It's good. Again, uh, sentiment is that uh, I'm glad live entertainment is back, and I value it. And um, I those pat these past two concerts, like they studies say, concerts do boost your moods and stuff. Um, and just yeah, comedy concerts. And just get out and stuff and i just I, me i have i have paranoia issues i'm just paranoid that it's gonna go back but i can oh, just scream my rice my rice and drive some truck out of them well i mean it's been two years to this yeah. day i mean it's this month two years so it's basically i know that's what we've been conditioned to the last two years and uh you know, that's, we're always waiting for the next shooter drop. Cause you know, we thought we, we thought it was over twice, you know, ready to be back to normal. And uh, the white house, do you think the, and this is, I'm not making this political. This is just like a human question. Do you think the a business question, do you think the white house is cutting funding for just money reasons, incompetence reasons, or the fact that they think it's not an issue anymore, which is either they're right or wrong. I can't have this discussion over YouTube. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm bringing I'm, I'm bringing the Southern Illinois out of you. No, man, it's just it's just a critical thinking. I'm a critical thinker. I don't know. I'm hoping they cut it because they know it's not going to be an issue. But I guess how the fuck do they know? Why should I trust the government, right? I my mind goes the same place it went. Uh, during the first tragedy of our lifetime when we were in high school the uh the new york okay yeah yeah stuff so don't say so of course you know gave it a couple years three four years but when you look at if you take a look and look at it as a whole the whole 20 years even like 10 years after it happened you just look at them. So my 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 mind goes from it could it could be a hundred percent this, it could be fifty percent this, but my brain is never like yes, it's exactly how they said it. it you know exactly how it, they told it it happened. If that makes any sense. Just be careful because Alex Jones is on trial right now. Uh, oh. For I'm not. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying anything. But like, just like, it's just He's where I'm of, like, it, like if someone presents a, a concept or a theory, and it's not me. It's a you know. If I hear, I'm like, okay, I don't believe it, but it could be. It's possible. And then, yeah. and then a 180. Like, no, it was because of this. And it sounds like that could make sense. And then, like the craziest theory, it's like, yeah, I doubt that. Yeah. But who knows? that's kind of where my brain goes so like of all the stuff that's been thrown us the last two years everything that's you know been presented or crazy not crazy and they're like yeah i guess that could have happened i don't know it sounds like if it's like 
like coincidental or it's like, yeah, it could be. Yeah. We'll never know. Or we might know 10 years from now. Do you know Alex Jones? Think for yourself. Question authority. Do you know Alex Jones is not showing up to his trial because yeah, he has yeah. the most medical condition? Yeah. Poor guy. Is he going to get thrown in jail? He can play this card as long as he can. I mean, he apparently he's still doing his stupid show, so it can't be that serious. He's get he's getting a big following though. Like, uh, like they're just like he's been right about a lot of stuff. Probably he's wrong right. about a lot of stuff too. If you fucking make enough shit up, eventually you'll be right. Right. <laughs> right. Well, that guy's a fucking clown penis. I fucking hate that guy. I'm glad they're fucking suing him. Uh, my hair's crazy today. Uh, he's, he's a liar. Yeah, it's like like the episodes where he goes on Rogan. He's just like completely hammered by like the third hour, and even Joe Rogan's like, "You need to calm it down, bud. Just calm down." Well, they're smoking. Yeah, smoking. He drink. starts getting loud, right? He starts yeah, getting like loud. And, yeah. that one episode, like he like started, he had like a breakdown. I think he does probably have mental problems. Yeah, he's like I'm just lonely or something. Like it was so like. Now you're having like a mental breakdown on, on on camera right now. Remember during his trial for his divorce, for the custody trial, they said like he took his shirt off for family therapy. It's like, why would you take your shirt? It was a bunch of like weird shit. And then he's like, they asked him something and he's like, I don't remember. I had a big bowl of chili. They're like, a chili erases your memory? He's like, a big bowl? Oh, yeah. Like, just think of all the stuff he's on. Like the stuff he's been, not even like drugs, just like all that stuff. He like his info wars pushes, and he probably doesn't take it. He knows it's, he knows it's it's bad. I mean, by the way, make sure you buy Todd's water. Todd's water available uh, wherever there's uh, not uh, currency exchange. I drank all my Todd's water today. Oh, I'm starting to lose my voice. <clears throat> That's number <why> six. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, until next time, hopefully this this all makes it past the uh, the uh, inspection point. One time I saw Todd, he had to go to the bathroom and he was pissing in a, a bottle of one of his, it was like an empty bottle, I guess. And I was like, wow, you don't know like where the toilet is? And he's just like, I'm just, you know, filling up my product. And I didn't know what that meant, so. <laughs> On that note, make sure you get your Chaz water. Uh yeah, we're a happy medium at a happy medium pod. Go find us, check us out. We'll see you next time. Bye.